Hey guys, Tyler here. Today I'm playing Opus Magnum, a game I wanted to make videos on forever. This is a game where you have to create satisfying mechanical machines to alchemize various chemical products. The goal is this, you must take the reagents, elemental air and elemental water, and combine them into the product waterproof sealant. So you can drag them onto the hexagonal grid, and we're going to manipulate these so they become this. Now you may notice in the product the elements are bound together, so I can take a bonding glyph. I can move this out of the way to rotate it. Now, to get the elements from their starting point to the bonding glyph, you must have these mechanical arms set up that will move them into place. And once you place down each arm, there's a little track below where you get to program each arm. I'll slowly introduce the program because that's probably the hardest part of the game. But basically, I want to take this third arm, pick up this element, and move it to the center of this bonding glyph. It would just look something like this, and you can see it in action right here. And what it does is it just does the same thing over and over and over again until there's an error. Atoms may not collide. Now while that's happening, I will want the first one to pick up its element, rotate a little, and then drop and repeat. And then the second arm is drawing from the same element as the third arm, so it has to wait its turn, two ticks in specific, to pick it up and then drop it. So now it'll look something like this. You see it's bonded together, and now I just have to bring it to its goal. So I'm gonna grab an arm that can change in length and will only pick up the product once it's finally made. It will then pull it in and then drop and repeat. So now, let's take a look. And look at that, very satisfying. It just has to run through multiple times to make sure that it works. Now, what I failed to mention is that there is a global high score leaderboard. You can optimize cost, you can optimize speed, and you can optimize the area in which it takes place. So now let me show you what optimize for speed would look like. With just a very small change, I've now created what is the fastest possible time for this product. Now this one's easy to get the fastest time on, the rest won't be so easy. Let's go on to the next level. This one requires me to turn elemental lead and elemental quicksilver into gold. Now there's a special machine that can help me out here, and it's called the Glyph of Projection. Now what it does, assuming there is an atom of elemental lead on the right side, if you add elemental quicksilver, it will level up the lead to become something greater. So let me show you what that looks like. First gotta pick up the lead, bring it in and drop it. At the same time, I'll pick up some quicksilver and drop it. So the lead becomes something greater, but of course it stays in, so I have to make sure it does not collide. Now what I actually want to do is repeat the instructions. I don't remember how many times for the quicksilver, but you repeat until it becomes gold. Maybe this many times? There it is. And then and only then can I pick up the gold and let the cycle repeat. There we go, very satisfying, creating gold. Now once again, I wanna to try to optimize for time. And with just some minor changes, I believe I've got it to work. Got this track, and I've adjusted a few of the timings, so you can now see it just moving as fast as possible for 62 cycles. Now I'm not going to spend much time explaining why it's the fastest possible you can do it. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. Let's go to the next level instead. Now this is where I must take only elemental earth and turn it into face powder. You might notice there is a part of the product that is not in the reagent, and that's because I have not done calcification yet. Calcification means that when an element passes over this fancy glyph, it gets turned into calcium, which is on the left side of face powder. With that in mind, let's make some. I wanna start with a couple arms once again. I'm gonna do a little thing with arms on a track. I always find this to be a very simple way to get the job done. You know what, two of these are perfect. And then one arm to bring it all home. So this should be pretty simple. The first thing I wanna do is actually have the second arm pick up my earth, move along the track towards the plus, and that will drag it over the calcium onto the glyph of bonding, which just looks something like this. There you go. And then you may have noticed I've 
you can't pick up an element on the exact next step. You have to wait one step in between, and that's just how the game works. So after this process has been done twice, the fourth one is actually ready to pick up the whole thing, rotate, and drop it off. Then do I actually need the third one? Well, so this would work. But it is not quite optimized for speed. I could still reduce six cycles. And that's why I had the other track. Basically, it is considered optimal if the Earth is picked up on every other tick. So that's why you need another arm on this side that would pick it up, bring it along the track, and drop and repeat. And then you need the four to repeat its instruction. I think this will work. Oh, I'm one cycle off. Let's see what I can do. I figured it out. Yep, 26 cycles. It required me to move the four to the other side. Because this way I get to grab the product and swing it over one tick earlier. Okay, on to the next one. I now have to take elemental water and turn it into distilled water. The name of the level is called Hangover Cure. There's a bit of a story about how the person I'm playing as is an alchemy student at an academy. It's all just kind of airy nonsense. The main pull of the game is the gameplay. So once again, it looks like I'll need a glyph of multi-bonding. I actually think this is a fairly nifty setup. Very first thing I want to do is have the first arm pick it up, rotate twice, drop it off. Then have the second arm pick it up, rotate it twice, drop it off. And then have the third arm pick it up, rotate it only once, and then the fourth arm will pick it up, rotate it, drop it. Let's see how well this works. I was worried about that. In that case, I will need to change everything. Well, why don't I do some tracks then? They never hurt anybody. The setup will instead look like this. Move along the track, drop it off. Pick it up, move it along the track, and drop it off. And then the third one, pick it up, and I'll just have it push out before dropping off and allowing me to pick it up with the fourth one. Rotate it, drop it off, and that should give me maximum speed. But it doesn't because I missed some timing. I believe I need to add a little bit of waiting. And that's all. I've reached the fastest possible time. If I want to though, I could try to optimize for cost to change it up. Cause it looks like people got a cost in between 25 and 50 gold. Whatever that is, this is the cheapest possible, which sounds absurd. Let's see what that would look like. Now to have it cheap, I can have it take as long as I want. I think it's gonna be something simple as this. A single bonding glyph, which costs 10 gold, a single mechanical arm, which costs 20, and a single calcifier which costs 10 for 40. Now I've just got to get all the details right. Let's see if this works. I could pick up the water, spin around three times clockwise, calcifying it, drop it and return, pick up a new one, spin it counterclockwise, also three times, drop it and return, pick up a third one, spin it clockwise to calcify it, then counterclockwise three times, to bond it with the rest, and then twice more to get it in position, and then I can do a pivot instruction, which we'll see it will look something like this, and I'm pretty sure this will set it up perfectly. Two thirds of the way there. No, it runs over itself, how could I forget? But honestly, I could just get rid of this last step, and I think I might have a better idea. Because instead of rotating this three times, instead I'm gonna rotate it twice and pivot then drop and repeat. Then I will be able to pick up the last one, rotate it twice, pivot it twice counterclockwise. I need to take all this and move it over because I need to pivot this once more. Oh, and also actually rotate this three times. Yes, yes, that's it. Takes a while, but it's cheap. 
Budget Factory production. And even this cute little guy is satisfying in his own right. So I technically don't know if that's cheap as possible, but it would make sense if it was. Now I could optimize for area, but I'll save that for another one. On to the next one. I had to turn three reagents of elemental fire into airship fuel. Now I think they're just giving me multiple of these to help me optimize for speed. So because this is a four long product, I think I will need not only a multi-bond, but also a single bond to go with. Let's just focus on completing it first. So I'm going to start with a simpler, but admittedly slower solution, just to kind of get the idea of this down, before diving into a really interesting and complicated but fast solution. So, it requires four arms. Let's get this in the right order. It'll look something like this, and I guess actually a fifth arm to grab the whole completed product. But the first four are just made to make one instance of the product. So the first time we'll pick it up, rotate twice, drop it off. At the same time, the second one we'll pick it off, rotate once, drop it off. At the same time, the third one we'll pick it up, move along the track twice, drop it off. And then only after the third one's picked it up, the fourth one can pick it up, extend twice, and drop it off. Then the fifth one can pick it up, pull it in and drop it off. And I'm pretty sure the timing's right on this. Yeah, already it's semi-fast, satisfying, and most importantly, correct. But we can go even faster. Nearly twice as fast, in fact. So I did some off-camera building. This took a long time to build. Not as long as the change in lighting implies, but I've been working hard on a very efficient time-wise and somewhat money-wise build. It costs 410, but everything here is important. So first I want to break this down, then I'll show it to you in action. Arms number one and two, their sole purpose is getting this first thing of fire into the slots that are here or here, usually here. And then arms number three and four, are solely responsible for getting this fire into here or here. And then numbers five and six are solely responsible for getting this element to here or here. So it gets three elements to four spots equally distributed over the course of the event. It will bond t uh, twice here and here. And then both of these will be brought to this diagonal bond where we'll be combined into the giant airship fuel, and it has outside things that are calcified. And then basically 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 here are just all part of bringing these monstrosities in this direction towards this thing here. So you can see it one step at a time, a few get picked up, brought over, and then some get slid up, more get brought in, others get slid in, and now the first one is created, a couple more steps go by, and you can see that slowly, well not slowly, actually pretty quickly, getting six of these products made. And the last one just comes dashing in for 19 cycles, which is the fastest possible time. So now here's what it looks like in fast motion. Is this not satisfying? Everything working together in perfect harmony. This was tough. I spent a lot of time actually kind of getting the cost down. I think a fun way to play this game is actually to have lowest cost while having minimum possible cycles. I, I'm sure this is beatable, but 410 is as cheap as this build is going to get. You need an entirely different strategy, I think, to get cheaper. But you can kind of see the movement of these go. You can see the four kind of go back and forth along this triangle. Same with the three, same with the two. And the 7 and 11 just kind of rotate around each other neatly. And the 8 and 10, they share a track but don't get in the way of each other. And then the final thing that end caps it off is the 12 grabbing a fire and then bringing it along without stopping all the way to the exit. So I think this is a good stopping point. 
Let me know if you guys want to see more crazy, satisfying machines in the future. I can whip them up, and you know it's only going to get more insane. Thank you all for watching. It's been Opus Magnum. Have a wonderful day, and peace.